but I'm sure this is gonna take me hours. Pretty shattered, it's torn, it's pretty crumbly, it's pretty gross. That is on there. You'll recognize this as a lightsaber. Heat up the nuts. Oh boy. I don't care that it broke. You came out. Talk dirty to me. Na, 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 na. Oh, you were so hot. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Zach Does It. Now this one's going to be one of the longer ones so I'm going to keep this intro nice and short. For starters we're going to be tackling the front driver's side wheel well and as you're about to see it was quite the ordeal but thankfully I got into a groove after the first one came out and the subsequent three which we'll cover in the next episode didn't take nearly as long to cover. But today's episode is more about that learning experience. So the only thing I'm gonna say in this intro is if you're enjoying this content or this series, uh, definitely hit a like and subscribe and help this channel reach others who may be in the process of taking their car apart and could benefit from this content. So without further ado, let's jump into taking Mama Miata apart down to the bones. Okay, so we've got the wheels off and it is now time to tackle the brakes, the suspension, everything that's inside of the wheel well behind the wheel. We're gonna do the front, then we're gonna do the back, and after all of that's taken care of, we should have a much better time accessing the transmission and differential, and after that, everything will be taken out. Now I say that, and it sounds really simple, but I'm sure this is gonna take me hours. So I brought some power tools, some impact drivers, we're going to see what it takes to get this rust bucket taken apart and uh, we'll go from there. We'll take a tally of everything that needs to be replaced, uh, everything that isn't already planned on getting replaced. Like I know I'm replacing my rotors, I know I'm replacing my pads, my calipers, but what if there's a bolt I need? What if there's an extra piece somewhere in here that is not included in part of the kits that I'm going to be buying? Well, I want to make sure that I've got it all on hand when I start reassembling things, otherwise this is going to take a lot longer for me to do. So with that in mind, let's take a ton of pictures, let's take a ton of video, let's make sure that I can see exactly what it looked like before I took everything apart so that when I start putting it all back together, if I get stuck, I know what I'm looking at. So here we are looking inside the driver's side front wheel well. And uh, as you can see, the shock cover is uh, pretty shattered. It's torn, it's pretty crumbly, it's pretty gross. Uh, we looked at that. Uh, way back when, when I was first tearing Mama Miata apart, and we knew that that was not going to be good. So we are planning on replacing our shocks here. Um, everything else looks to be in okay shape. I think all of the wishbone components, all of the OEM parts look like I might be able to get away with just cleaning them up and repainting them. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna 
sand all this down. We're going to do a ton of work to it. We'll get some new tie rods. Those are pretty banged up and uh, we can certainly get some new ones. Um, but yeah, so far it's just dirty. It's really, really dirty. It's really, really torn up. Uh, but let's uh, let's get to taking this thing apart. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Prayers and thoughts. Thoughts and prayers. That is on there. Um, I mean, I should, I need to make the rounds and see if any of these come loose. Because if none of them come loose, then there's not much point here. Jacking away at it. So when it comes to like when all the suspension stuff has been taken apart and then three years from now we've got a house where I disassemble it again like for a final time. Yeah. It's gonna be all new bolts. Like I'm not gonna have the same difficulty because it's gonna be like two or three year old bolts instead of some of these things that may have been on for 30 years. Like these are OEM parts. So these are either Someone needed a new suspension, mm -hmm. and they put original parts back on. You know, this is normally what people do. Or this is literally the suspension it shipped with from the factory. Wow. All right. So uh, we didn't make a lot of progress. If you couldn't tell by the last clip. Uh, everything on this car is seized, completely rusted, and is not going to come off without some serious tooling, elbow grease, shearing some bolts, or breaking something. So, before I completely destroy this Miata and have to pay insane amounts of money for someone else to fix my mistakes, I've got one last trip up my sleeve. Uh, and. You may know what this is already. Uh, you may have read the label on this as I flashed it to you. Uh, but if you don't, I think you'll recognize this as a lightsaber. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually called a bolt buster and it uses some magic technology called induction. And what it does is with the help of some induction coils, uh, it will allow me to hopefully heat up the nuts on these seized bolts. And I'm being very clear, I said nut, not the bolt. You don't want to use this on the bolt, you want to use this on the nut. Uh, and what should happen if we get the right size coil here and it doesn't make contact with the nut itself, uh, is we have this coil that when plugged into this device uh, will run a current through it and heat the nut in hopes that it will expand faster than the bolt, uh, thus relieving the stress and uh, disconnecting all the rust contact points uh, and allowing us to take the nut off. We'll still have the problem of trying to figure out how to get the bolts out uh, because those two are seized and rusted in place. So this isn't going to be easy, but with any luck we'll at least be able to take the nuts off, uh, which makes it a much simpler process to then get everything else taken apart. So. Uh, let's get set up with that and see how this works. Oh boy. Don't catch anything on fire, okay? Uh, okay, so we're not going to catch anything on fire. Um, well, not with me in the car. <laughs> no, definitely not with you in the car. Alright, so what we are going to do first... This is probably the easiest one to do. Let's see, I think I want to take... That's a little loose fit, which if we think about the nut expanding means it should be a tighter fit. Once we get this on, how big is the other side? Tight fit. Okay. Okay. So just like we thought, not going to work. Okay. 
So, I'm gonna be very careful. Don't try this at home, kids. All right, so the instructions say we can touch the fiberglass, we just don't want to. So we're gonna hold it carefully like that. There's not enough room, so you're supposed to be able to bend these 90 degrees. And then we can insert like this. Okay, future Zach interrupt. You're about to see me use the Bolt Buster for the first time, and I won't give any spoilers away, but I am going to leave in the full duration usage of the Bolt Buster. I'm not going to show it as I start using it and then immediately thereafter, I'm gonna show you exactly how long I had to apply it to get the desired effect. That way you have realistic expectations if you are to go ahead and buy this, I think, $600 tool. Spoiler alert, I do think that this tool can be worth it. I'm not sure if it's worth it for me just yet. I might have to get a little bit more use out of it first. But with that being said, let's just jump back to Passac and see how the Bolt Buster works. First heat cycle didn't do anything. Still, still on there. So let's try again. Attempt number Hell yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yes. Maybe maybe. Yes. Tell the doctor to call the guy that shot a drug deal. Thanks. Yeah. So before I say it again, don't bring your kids to your drug deals. This is the world today. Glad I made a tiny dent. Like, I don't know how far I'm gonna be able to get, but if I can even get like two of these done, mm -hmm. if I can just get the driver's side done, I'd be happy. Okay. Let's see, so I need to get this castle nut off. How big is it? Okay, 
That's the perfect size. Ugh. You know, there's a, a thing in a, the car world. And I understand why you don't use it everywhere because you want to keep things tight. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as I get it off here. But it's called a castle nut. So what you do is you take, there's a hole in the, the bolt that you put a cotter pin through. It's just a, like a, think of a bobby pin, okay. but one that's supposed to be bent. So what you do is you put it through the hole and it aligns with one of those, or like two of those uh, castle posts. Yeah. And so then this literally can't unscrew itself because there's a, a wire running between it. It's, it's called safety wire in the aircraft industry. And it's basically like, you just put a, a little piece of wire in that's very unlikely to fail. Yeah. And it keeps things from rattling loose. So, but... I just had to get that off so I can bust apart some other John. Uh, yes! spring compressor and I really don't. I should have thought about renting one or buying one at this point. Yeah, I sheared the, uh, the nut off, or the bolt off. I don't know where the bolt went. I mean, I know I'm doing this the wrong way, but... I mean, plenty of people have done it the wrong way and succeeded. Slowly but surely. The next one I should probably get this one near the brake line. It's huge. If I get that though, this assembly, well, that can already rotate up. So if I take this cotter pin out, all right. Problem solving with Zach. Whew. 
Ha! Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care that it broke. You came out. Talk dirty to me. Na, 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 na. Oh, you were so hot. And that is a wrap. It took me two full days just to get to this point. The first day I really didn't make any progress other than taking the wheels off. And that was because I encountered a lot more rusted on and seized bolts than I was expecting. And more importantly, I wasn't able to actually break them free with my own brute strength. So I had to rely in a few cases on the bolt buster to help get things loosened up and taken apart. And after that, I was actually able to make some decent progress. And I also figured out faster ways of taking all the other components off within the wheel well so that I could disassemble them outside of the car. And we'll see what that process looks like in the next episode where we take out the components from the remaining three wheel wells. But for now, this has been another episode of Zach Does It. If you've stuck in there to the end, please definitely be sure to leave a like and subscribe or even consider sharing this video with someone else who's struggling to get their components taken apart because they're too rusted in, they're too seized up, and they're at their wits ends to taking apart their own project car. Uh, let them know that there is hope, whether it's using weird body positions and your legs instead of your arms to try to turn a wrench, or it comes down to actually buying a tool like the bolt buster. Either way, let them know that there's hope in their own project car. Um, more on that bolt buster, actually, uh, I can leave a link in the description below where I got it from, but if I remember right, it was about a $600 tool. And in each of those different shots where you saw the smoke coming up, that was actually just the uh, fiberglass insulation on the wire that was getting a little too hot or a little too close to the nut that was being heated up. So it was burning off. That wasn't the nut almost catching on fire or anything like that. But overall, I can say that I'm satisfied with the tool. I think it did its job effectively. Um, unfortunately, it turned out that using brute force was able to remove a significant number of the components while they were still in the car. Now, in my basement, I've got the remaining uh, kind of assemblies all still put together and maybe taking those apart when they're not attached to the vehicle will actually be a lot easier with the bolt buster in hand. So uh, when we get to that point where I'm taking everything apart to get them refurbished, uh, we'll see exactly how effective it is and if it's even necessary on some of these smaller pieces. That's all I've got for this week. I hope your project cars are going uh, just as good or even better than mine. And with that, I will see you in the next one.